Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how artificial intelligence or AI is going to revolutionize and change the healthcare industry. So when doctors are using this artificial intelligence to increase and improve patient outcomes, the doctors using this will have the best results and that is what we're going to see over the next five to ten years is that doctors who are stuck in the old way probably aren't going to get as good results as those that are using artificial intelligence to really improve patient outcomes. And I want to talk today about how this is going to apply to different models with the traditional model or the allopathic model versus the natural or alternative healthcare model. And just where this is going to go and how you can utilize it to the highest leverage in order to get better uh, results and to help resolve your chronic conditions. Now, I asked um, artificial intelligence the other day on ChatGPT, I asked it, what were the outcomes when it looked like somebody got the diagnosis of diabetes? And it gave several different answers and I'm gonna go over those at the end of the video. And I'm going to talk about how I'm using artificial intelligence in my practice to help me uh, achieve better outcomes and to communicate with my patients better so that they can understand the prognosis and help understand the outcomes if they aren't proactive in their health and how we need to be very uh, proactive when it comes to reversing these chronic health conditions that we see like diabetes, heart disease, neuropathy, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and dive into it. And if you haven't already, please uh, hit the thumbs up button, share, subscribe to my channel. It really helps the channel out to get this information out to more people so that they can understand how artificial intelligence is going to really help them take control of their health. So now when it comes to artificial intelligence, uh, it's going to have the potential to save more lives and to improve patient outcomes. Whether you are, um, you know, using medication, whether you're doing an alternative um, method such as supplements or diet recommendations, it's actually going to be able to tailor these to any of the data that you give it. So if you give it your height, your weight, your age, your sex all of that is going to be able to utilize that and give you the highest likely outcome in reversing whether it's diabetes, heart disease, neuropathy, whatever it may be. And it's going to be able to pull all of the research from the web in order to give you that information. So these machine learning algorithms can analyze vast amounts of patient data. So it's not only going to be uh, your data is going to be patients all around the world um, and obviously with that there will be certain companies who take that over and comply with HIPAA in order to use that information but in order to get the best results the more data this has the better the outcomes are going to be. So it's going to be able to analyze this patient data including the medical history lab results imaging scans uh, in order to make physicians or healthcare providers um, have the best um, result and best outcome and to help them tailor their treatments. <clears throat> this means that diagnoses are gonna be faster for pre-diabetes if you're at risk for strokes or heart disease or cancers, then this is gonna be able to take all of that data and turn it into uh, a detailed plan in order to one prevent that or to tell you if you continue down this route this is what's going to happen and you're going to be at a higher risk for developing cancer, developing heart disease, or uh, developing uh, diabetes. So now it's also going to be able to help uh, these healthcare providers streamline their administrative task. So hopefully this will uh, give practitioners the ability to focus more on patient care. Now, I don't think that it will completely replace healthcare practitioners in the next five to 10 years, but I think that it is going to be a huge uh, integration in order for them to be more effective with their treatments and their outcomes. So uh, it's eventually going to get to where 
It's going to do the scheduling of appointments, maintaining the health records, and even the billing can be automated so that it's going to relieve all of that administrative uh, stress and allow the doctors to really focus on what they need to patient care because I've seen in multiple practices that the administrative task of billing and scheduling, those can really weigh down a practice. And I see doctors getting frustrated a lot, but we use automatic schedulers and we use virtual assistants in my practice in order to um, reduce that. But I think eventually we'll look at integrating an AI virtual assistant in order to you know, make the phone calls, schedule the appointments, and even do any of our billing as well. And so um, I think that this will also, when I was talking to the AI model, it will integrate to where you will get a device that you're going to wear that is going to monitor all of your biometrics. So from heart rate to respiration rate, probably even um, your blood to some extent, monitoring you know, electrolyte levels. If you have any active infections, viral infections, um, it's probably going to monitor to your temperature and it'll have warning signs like when you need to go get a checkup, when, and it'll probably be that you can do a blood draw at home or you know somebody will come to your house and, and do it and then you won't even have to worry about going to the doctor anymore because they'll analyze that and tell you what's wrong and then send you um, a protocol or medication or supplements in order to reverse that. So that's gonna be something that I think, you know, we already see that with like the Whoop Band, uh, being able to monitor your recovery, but I think that that technology is just gonna get better and better in order to help us uh, prevent any of these chronic diseases from occurring. So, uh, and then I think also with that, what it will do is it will give you feedback. So one of the ways that we test for food intolerances or food sensitivities in our program is that we have patients wear a, a pulse oximeter on their finger when they eat certain foods after doing a cleanse. And if we see their heart rate spiking when they eat those certain foods, we know that it is causing stress to their body because just like if you see a tiger, your heart rate is going to shoot up. If you're eating something and it's causing an inflammatory cascade, it's going to cause your um, biometrics to elevate and to, um, and to, it's gonna show that in, in the data. And so one of the ways that we do that is with the pulse ox oximeter and have um, patients record that, but now it's probably gonna be automated with, with AI. And so additionally with this, it's gonna be able to predict epidemics and outbreaks by analyzing patterns in big data. So let's just say for example, like malaria or something like that, it's gonna be able, if everybody has these uh, data bands or if we have this collective cloud where all this information is going to, it's gonna be able to tell us and help us prevent any epidemics or pandemics from happening. And it's gonna allow us to quarantine that and help us um, take control of it a lot faster, which is another big benefit to not only yourself, but the overall population. And let me just check my uh, last notes here. And so the new thing I was just talking with the patient this morning is that AI will help with the discovery of new drugs and it's gonna make them more effective. Now, for me being in the natural alternative space, um, I definitely help my patients try to come off of their medications so that they're not getting liver toxicities, they're not getting the side effects that usually come with drugs, but with integrating AI into this discovery model, what will happen is that we'll, we'll get more effective drugs we'll, we'll, that will have less side effects, which is a big uh, addition to it. But I think it's also gonna help us improve our supplement protocols because it's gonna be able to analyze your blood work to see if you have any vitamin D deficiencies, but maybe you need a certain amount of vitamin K that is low in order to absorb the vitamin D, but you also need vitamin C for your collagen and bone health because you have signs and symptoms of osteoporosis. So there's gonna be some really neat stuff that comes out with this. And um, while AI offers this tremendous potential, 
uh, it's important to address concerns surrounding privacy and ethical considerations. So safeguarding patient data is going to be the biggest issue when it comes to this. But if we can figure that out, then it, this is really going to change the healthcare industry and make it better, in, in my opinion. Like I said, there, is all, there are always pros and cons when it comes to uh, any type of new advancement, but this can really revolutionize uh, the healthcare industry in order to make it more effective and to help people take action when it comes to their health and prevent these chronic diseases that are rampant in our country uh, today. So now I, I promised to tell you at the end how I used AI the other day in order to uh, talk to it about what are the potential outcomes for somebody who gets diabetes. When I talked to the AI about diabetes and prognoses or clinical outcomes, here's what it said. So it said in five years, the progression of type two diabetes and high cholesterol will largely depend on various factors, including your current health status and the management strategies that you adopt. And here are some possible scenarios and it gave me three. So the first one was improved health. So if you effectively manage your conditions through a combination of medication, lifestyle modifications, and regular medical checkups, you can potentially achieve better control over your diabetes and cholesterol levels.